Spider-Man is buff. Spider-Man is skinny. Spider-Man is skinny buff? So as much as Spider-Man changes in between adaptations, whether it be his character or his costume, there's one thing I never see very much discord about aside from brief comments, even if it's a part of Spider-Man that's always changing and is usually unpredictable. Spider-Man's gains. You see, with spider powers usually comes a massive increase in strength, and sometimes size. I mean, if you're gonna make a new Spider-Man adaptation, you can't just not figure out how fit and muscly your Spider-Man's gonna be. I feel like people often just typecast Spider-Man as a skinny kid in spandex, but that couldn't be further from the truth. Spider-Man is a big guy. Even in the original issues of ASM, Peter only looks skinny in his costume for about an issue or two. After that, Peter is an absolutely fucking massive unit. As far as I can see, Spider-Man has remained pretty buff throughout his time in the comics, and most adaptations take note of this. But how buff is too buff for Spider-Man? And how skinny is too skinny? Today I'll be compiling some of the most noteworthy Spider-Man body types, and giving my thoughts on whether or not I enjoy said adaptation's body type. That's right guys, we're body shaming today. I don't actually condone making unwarranted comments on people's bodies. And also, since I, I, I'm whispering in your ear right now, please uh, subscribe. I also have no experience with examining muscle mass or anything like that, so I'll definitely sound stupid to anyone who does. Please feel free to comment and tell me how stupid I sound if you are experienced. Okay, so let's get the shit talking out of the way. I don't really care for the body of Insomniac Spider-Man. I just think he's built way too normally for my taste. I won't deny that I think he looks good and fit and well, but I just don't think he has anything going on in terms of having a unique Spider-Man build. He's not too buff, he's not too skinny, he's right in the middle. He's perfect, but only because I think he checks all the right boxes and nothing more. The nothing more part is mostly my problem. At least his voice fits his body type insanely well. I think Yuri's snarky yet mature voice paired with this body type suits this adaptation extremely well. I, I shit talk this adaptation way too much on my channel. People are gonna start to think I, I fucking hate it when I really just think it's, it's pretty good. It's alright. But do you want to see an adaptation that doesn't have a body to match the voice? Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite Spider-Man looks fucking massive. Now I don't have any particular issue with him looking this massive. I think he actually looks kind of alright. Kind of? My only criticism is that he's built too similar to the rest of the characters in the game. But the second he opens his mouth, any hope of me liking this guy goes down the drain. And the walls must be shielded. This has umbrellas stench all over it. And all this time, right under our noses, huh? Spider-Man. Damn it, I could have killed you. Many have tried. Robbie Damon's voice work as Spider-Man has been controversial among some fans to say the least. I've heard some people say that they like him, and many other despise his whiny and wimpy Spider-Man voice. I despise his whiny and wimpy Spider-Man voice. It's not like I don't think he can't do a good Spider-Man voice. I've heard him voice act in other games, like Persona 5, and I think he sounds great there, just when he's not forcing himself to sound younger. Look, I, I just don't think having the most roided out Spider-Man being voiced by someone notorious for doing a younger Spider-Man was a good idea. Dude, he looks like he could make The Rock cry, but he sounds like a 15-year-old boy. But that's not even the worst part. There have been several more Marvel vs. Capcom games before this one, and Spider-Man is just as buff, if not a tiny bit less shredded. But do you want to know who voiced him before Robbie Damon took on the role? Josh fucking Keaton, fan favorite Spider-Man voice actor. Josh Keaton's voice for Spider-Man fits this way more buff Spider-Man much better, all because Josh Keaton doesn't try to make his voice sound younger. He just uses a more natural voice for the character, and it works way more well with the fit Spider-Man in Marvel vs. Capcom. That's why JJ pays me the big bucks. But then they threw him out in place of Robbie Damon. Anyway, quick tangent, you ever notice how Marvel has like eras with Spider-Man voice actors? Like they'll have certain eras where they only get one guy to do the Spider-Man voice for a while until they throw him out for the next one. For example, Josh Keaton. After his cartoon appearance in Spectacular Spider-Man, he landed the role for Spider-Man again in Marvel vs. Capcom as mentioned earlier. 
He was also cast as Spider-Man in Spider-Man Edge of Time, then Avengers Earth Mightiest Heroes, until being replaced by child endangerer Drake Bell, and Josh Keaton had his lines completely dubbed over. Drake Bell then went on to voice Spider-Man in several other places like Disney Infinity, Marvel's Online MMO, and a couple of other TV show appearances. Then Robbie Damon was cast as Spider-Man for the new and god-awful Marvel Spider-Man TV show, not to be confused with the much more successful adaptation with the same name. I believe he was then cast as Spider-Man in a Marvel VR game, and then in Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite as mentioned earlier. Then the much more successful adaptation came back to steal Robbie's spotlight, replacing Robbie with Yuri Lowenthal, who was secretly there all along, voicing Spider-Man in earlier and less well-known projects like Spider-Man Unlimited the mobile game, which I made a video about that you should watch, and Marvel Super Hero Squad Online, which is another lost media game I want to cover. After replacing Damon, Yuri got into more roles like Spider-Man in Marvel Future Revolution, Midnight Suns, and we're still in his era as of right now. I think as long as Yuri is Spider-Man in his AAA game series, Spider-Man is going to be Yuri Lowenthal whenever they just need someone to voice Spidey for a while. Oh fuck, we got off track. Uh, anyway, let's talk about Skinny Spider-Man. I'm very excited for the new Spider-Man movie, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. I've seen a lot of new images being released for it, but there's something I have to talk about. Does anyone think that Miles Morales should have been just a little bit bulkier in this new movie? Like, I love it when Miles is skinnier compared to Peter, because it makes it more obvious that he's way younger compared to Peter. But, I don't know, now that there's no Peter in this universe and Miles is way older, don't you think we could've at least slid some muscle onto him? Like, I know Miguel's been whooping his ass all up and down the Across the Spider-Verse trailer. I'm just glad he didn't challenge Miles to a game of basketball, because his ankles look like they'd be broken with the ever so slightest of breezes. I, I thought he looked great in the first movie, I, I, I just think they should have just given him more muscle for his second outing. Anyway, speaking of skinny Spider-Man, let's get back to Peter. Ultimate Spider-Man artist Mark Bagley is widely known for drawing one of the most iconic forms of Spider-Man. My favorite voice for Ultimate Spider-Man is still the one from the video game, where Sean Marquette voices him. He sounds super nasally and whiny, which might turn some people off, but for me it's more perfect for this skinny Spidey. The Triskelion, the world famous home of the world famous Ultimates. The superheroes people actually like, as opposed to me. Nick Fury, Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, some other people I can't think of right now. What makes them Ultimate anyway? Wouldn't Amazings or Spectaculars make more sense? Also he's not like a... a loser. Like he... He, he, he's a loser for sure, but he's not, he doesn't act like a loser like the, the, the Robbie Damon Peter Parker. I hate him. He, he's, he's annoying. He's an annoying dickhead. Speaking of voice work, check out Prodigy's Ultimate Spider-Man motion comic series. The voice for Peter is excellent here, and honestly these motion comics are probably the best way for a more wider audience to read Ultimate Spider-Man nowadays. Anyway, I think Bagley draws Spider-Man with a more lean body type, and some muscles still cut through the fabric. I think Mark Bagley is great at drawing this specific version of Spider-Man. Notice how I said this specific version. I think when Mark Bagley is hired to draw any other version of Spider-Man, it just does not cut it for me. He makes him look way too skinny and I can't really see him as whatever Spidey I'm supposed to be reading about because he looks like he's back to being a 15 year old boy who thinks it's still okay to call things ret- He could do it in the past though, draw buff Spidey I mean. His work from the 90s is stellar, and I think he just ended up drawing Spider-Man skinny for so long that he couldn't end up stopping in his more modern work. Like when he was hired to draw Raimi Spider-Man and did him almost no justice in the muscle department. Speaking of Raimi Spidey, let's talk about his build. I really love how he's shaped. I love his more wide upper body, paired with his slightly thinner waist. His broad shoulders, his thick motherfucking thighs, I love all of it. I think Raimi Spider-Man does an amazing job replicating more earlier, muscular Spider-Man art. If you want buff Spider-Man, base it off of Raimi. But how do I feel about further Spider-Man movie adaptations, Spider-Man body types? Honestly, I, I don't have much to say about them other than they're pretty cool, I guess. I just have more to say about Raimi, but I'll word vomit at you anyway. You fucking freak. Andrew is very long. There's some muscles that pop out through the suit, but for the most part, Andrew Spider-Man just looks extremely long. And I think that's, I, I think it's cool. Tom Holland just looks kind of alright as Spider-Man. I think he looks fine. I don't have much to say about him. 
I just think he kind of looks odd at times. Like, sometimes I feel like his muscles don't get enough definition in his Spidey suits. And honestly, the same can be said for Andrew. I think the reason I have to say more about Toby's is that they gave him a super defined muscle suit to wear under the costume. The other actors might have just been raw dogging it with no muscle suit, and that's why I have less to say. Anyway, let's get back to the cartoons. This is a big motherfucker! Spider-Man in his 90s show looks like a fucking monster truck. This man is huge! Just look at Peter Parker outside of the suit. Holy fucking shit, no wonder the bitches are crawling all over him, dude. This man is massive. I don't even know what to fucking say. He's just insanely yoked, he's ripped, he's shredded, he's massive. Honestly, I don't have any issues with this guy either, since his voice actually fits the body. Christopher Daniel Barnes does amazing as this version of Spider-Man, sounding like a whole grown-ass man while also looking the part too. So, uh, what can you learn from today? Your Spider-Man should sound how he looks. Don't hire a guy and make him sound like a teenager, then turn him around to make him shaped like a bodybuilder. Anyway, now that I'm done yapping, what do you think? What's your favorite Spider-Man build? Is there any Spider-Man you think should have been mentioned in this video? Comment below, I read a lot of comments, just don't make it super long, unless you indent. If you indent your comment, then I might read it, if it's super long. I don't read essays. I think uh, having Spider-Man be more cartoony, I, 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 I really hate how Spider-Man media is so, like, obsessed with, with looking super realistic, like, I... I love the Spider-Man PS4 game, but part of me kind of wishes it, like, tried to at least look like a comic book. I think this obsession with having Spider-Man be a real thing kind of removes a lot of creative choices that could be made. That's why I love uh, the End of the Spider-Verse franchise so much. Um, I think we need more Spidey cartoons, because I think when Spider-Man has been shown in cartoons, I think usually he looks phenomenal. Like, I love Spectacular Spider-Man. I love how like blocky and yet skinny his anatomy is i i enjoy it a lot uh i think a lot of the cartoons nail the look of spider-man in terms of anatomy like peter b parker he is super or like not peter b parker but just peter parker and in the spider-verse in general i think he looks super like lean but at the same time he's got like some big bulky ass muscles and i really love that and I think Spider-Man media should be more cartoony. I think I think we should not be striving to create these super realistic adaptations all the time. I think we need more like for example, the Midnight Suns game. The Midnight Suns game looks like it is trying to look realistic, and I think that's stupid. I think if more comic book-esque adaptations came out, more animated shit. I think Marvel would be much cooler, and honestly, I'm glad that they're doing more animated shit, even if I don't really enjoy it, like What If or, or Freshman Year. I hope they do more. I like animated Marvel. Bring back animated Marvel. That was a really long outro cut. Holy shit.